Today's lecture is about the varieties of English. There are several English dialects. 1. Australian and New Zealand English. 2. The English of India Pakistan. 3. African English. 4. Creoles and Pigeons. More than 80% of the population is British in Australia. By the mid-20th century, with rapid decline of its aboriginal tongues, English was without rivals in Australia. During colonial times, the new settlers had to find names for a fauna and flora, for example, banksa, iron bark, wee wee, different from anything previously known to them, trees that shed bark instead of leaves and cherries with external stones. The words brush, bush, creek, paddock, and scrub acquired wider senses. A creek leading out of a river and entering it again downstream was called an anastomizing branch, or an anabranch, whereas a creek coming to a dead end was called by its native name, a billabong. The giant kingfisher with its raucous bray was long referred to as a laughing jackass, later as a bushman's clock, but now it is a kookaburra. Cattle so intractable that only roping could control them were said to be ripable, a term now used as a synonym for angry or extremely annoyed. Some Australian English terms came from Aboriginal speech, the words boomerang, corroboree, warlike dance and then any large and noisy gathering, dingo, reddish brown wild dog, gorilla, cockatoo, gunya, bush hut, kangaroo, Kerry, dark red eucalyptus tree, nanda, rosaceous tree yielding edible fruit, wallaby, small marsupial, wallaroo, large rock kangaroo. Australian English has slower rhythms and flatter intonations than RP. Although there is remarkably little regional variation throughout the entire continent, there is significant social variation. The neutral vowel slash schwa slash as the I and sofa is frequently used as in London Cockney, arches and archers are both pronounced A, T integral schwa Z, and the pronunciations of R, P, D, and Go, R, respectively, D schwa I, and G schwa U. New Zealand English Although New Zealand lies over 1,000 miles away, much of the English spoken there is similar to that of Australia. The blanket term Austral English is sometimes used to cover the language of the whole of Australasia, or Southern Asia, but this term is far from popular with New Zealanders because it makes no reference to New Zealand and gives all the prominence, so they feel, to Australia. Between North and South Islands there are observable differences. For one thing, Maori, which is still a living language related to Tahitian, Hawaiian, and the other Austronesian, Malayo-Polynesian languages, has a greater number of speakers and more influence in North Island. The English of India-Pakistan In 1950 India became a federal republic within the Commonwealth of Nations, and Hindi was declared the first national language. English, it was stated, would continue to be used for all official purposes until 1965. In 1967, however, by the terms of the English Language Amendment Bill, English was proclaimed an alternative official or associate language with Hindi until such time as all non-Hindi states had agreed to its being dropped. English is therefore acknowledged to be indispensable. It is the only practicable means of day-to-day -day communication between the central government at New Delhi and states with non-Hindi-speaking populations, especially with the Deccan, or South, where millions speak Dravidian non-Indo-European languages, Telugu, Tamil, Kannada, and Malayalam. English is widely used in business, and, although its use as a medium in higher education is decreasing, it remains the principal language of scientific research. In 1956 Pakistan became an autonomous republic comprising two states, East and West. Bengali and Urdu were made the national languages of East and West Pakistan, respectively, but English was adopted as a third official language and functioned as the medium of interstate communication. In 1971 East Pakistan broke away from its western partner and became the independent state of Bangladesh. Let's speak about African English now. 
Africa is the most multilingual area in the world, if people are measured against languages. Upon a large number of indigenous languages rests a slowly changing superstructure of world languages Arabic, English, French, and Portuguese. The problems of language are everywhere linked with political, social, economic, and educational factors. The Republic of South Africa, the oldest British settlement in the continent, resembles Canada in having two recognized European languages within its borders, English and Afrikaans, or Cape Dutch. Both British and Dutch traders followed in the wake of 15th century Portuguese explorers and have lived in widely varying war and peace relationships ever since. In the early 1980s Afrikaners outnumbered British by 3 to 2. The Afrikaans language began to diverge seriously from European Dutch in the late 18th century and has gradually come to be recognized as a separate language. Although the English spoken in South Africa differs in some respects from standard British English, its speakers do not regard the language as a separate one. They have naturally come to use many Afrikanerisms, such as Kloof, Kop, Krenz, Veld, and Vli, to denote features of the landscape and occasionally employ African names to designate local animals and plants. The words trek and commando, notorious in South African history, have acquired a most worldwide currency. Elsewhere in Africa, English helps to answer the needs of wider communication. It functions as an official language of administration in Botswana, Lesotho, and Swaziland and in Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi, Uganda, and Kenya. It is the language of instruction at Makerere University in Kampala, Uganda, at the University of Nairobi, Kenya, and at the University of Dar es Salaam, in Tanzania. The West African states of the Gambia, Sierra Leone, Ghana, and Nigeria, independent members of the Commonwealth, have English as their official language. They are all multilingual. The official language of Liberia is also English, although its tribal communities constitute four different linguistic groups. Its leading citizens regard themselves as American Liberians, being descendants of those freed blacks whose first contingents arrived in West Africa in 1822. South of the Sahara indigenous languages are extending their domains and are competing healthily and vigorously with French and English. Pidgin language based on another language, but with a sharply curtailed vocabulary often 700 to 2,000 words and grammar, native to none of its speakers, and used as a lingua franca, or a language used as a means of communication between peoples with different native languages. A pidgin usually derives its vocabulary from one principal language, but its grammar will reflect the structures of each speaker's native tongue, or it will evolve a distinct grammar. Among languages that have given rise to pidgins are English, French, Spanish, Italian, Zulu, and Chinook. In a pidgin, words may change meaning, for example, the English word belong becomes blong is in Chinese pidgin and belong of in talk pisin, spoken in Papua New Guinea. Many concepts are expressed by phrases, for example, lay belong clot lightning, literally light of cloud in talk pisin. Creole language began as a pidgin but has become the native language of a community. Creoles and pigeons develop a means of communication between members of two mutually unintelligible language communities with simple grammatical structures and limited vocabularies, although the grammar of a creole is more complex than that of a pigeon. Moreover, the rules of creole grammar remain uniform from speaker to speaker, whereas pigeon grammar varies among speakers. Pigeons have no native speakers. When it acquires native speakers through years of use, it is called a creole. Creole languages exist throughout the world, although they develop primarily in isolated areas, especially islands. The primary creoles spoken in North America and the Caribbean include English-based Gullah, French-based Louisiana Creole, English-based Jamaican Creole, and French-based Haitian Creole. All of these creoles draw upon African languages. Linguists have noted some common features in grammatical structure among all Creole languages, 
The use of repeated adjectives and adverbs to indicate intensity and the use of particles to change verb tense. One theory states that all Creole languages descend from the same 15th century Portuguese pidgin, used by Portuguese explorers throughout Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Americas. When this pidgin encountered the languages of later colonizers, the basic grammar remained while the vocabulary incorporated new words from such languages as French and English. However, this hypothesis does not explain why some pidgins and creoles that developed with little or no contact with European languages still share grammatical features. Other scholars suggest that the shared grammatical features come from basic linguistic preferences for certain word order and for simplified and inflected forms of verbs and other parts of speech. One feature that distinguishes a Creole language from English is the use of the interior tense, which resembles the past perfect tense in English. The interior tense uses been or when instead of the suffix ed, so that had walked in English becomes been walk in Creole. Some common linguistic characteristics of the various Creole languages include questions and statements, identified by intonation alone, and patterns in verb conjugation. For example, Creole, the English-based Creole of Sierra Leone, and Guyanese Creole, the French-based Creole of Guyana, follow similar patterns of adding verb particles to change tense. In Creole, the word chop for eat becomes a chop to indicate I ate and be chop for I am eating. In Guyanese, Creole word MGZE for eat becomes mo MGZE for I ate and mo ka MGZE for I am eating. A Creole language often changes as its speakers assimilated linguistically into the dominant society. This is decreolization. This is the end of today's lecture. Many thanks for your attention.